five. All right, we got to get our boy Zach in here. Let's see. How do I get this guy in here? Go live in a room. Ooh, invite a person. And T X glow. Where you at, Mr. Zach? Boom, buddy. Got Yo, I'm gonna wave. Hey, <laughs> oh no! I just thought about something. I don't know if I can hear you if I don't unplug this thing. Let me try to unplug it. <laughs> Damn it! I can hear you, so we're good there. Good. Well, I can hear you now. Do I sound different or do I sound exactly the same? You sound pretty much the same. <laughs> okay, cool. Right on. I had a dope mic. Now the mic is gone. Okay. So, <laughs> we're gonna have to start doing this a lot more often, my man. Yeah, yeah, definitely. This is my first time going live, so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna need to take some lessons from you. Yeah. Well, uh, I I'll do my best. Make yourself look silly on the internet. That's my first lesson. Okay. That's all I can say. It's there's not much to it beyond that. Nice. Um, but. Dude, I want to dive right in and, and ask you a bunch of questions though, specifically about like like the things that people hate you up the absolute most about because I, I had uh, a question in my Discord the other day and it was about making some Miata taillights. And yeah. Somebody was asking about doing the, the hearts, you know, like yeah. the, the heart-shaped LEDs in the taillights. And I knew exactly who they were talking about. They're like, there's a guy I've seen does – I was like, oh, I'm talking about Zach. So <laughs> we'll, we'll get him in here and, and answer some questions. But um, what's been your experience with doing crazy ass taillights? When people hit you up, do you feel like they're normally completely unaware of how much time and effort goes into building these lights? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel like we're competing with uh, eBay Chinese manufacturers. Uh, just, you know, they have a price of like 100 to 200 bucks they can mass produce you know hundreds of lights at once meanwhile our uh speaking of our miata taillights Yay, you know they're, they're 20 30 40 hours sometimes depending on how much work we're going to do for adding show mode and all that yeah i mean that's not going to be something that we can uh just slam together in a weekend and, and have it out to you i mean we bought, we buy the boards from a lumesthetic that's no secret and that takes them you know a couple weeks because they're not going to make it until we order so it's it's made to order every time <laughs> yeah yeah i know man i i think the misconception that it's something that number one is like affordable like i don't know what affordable means because it's like who needs taillights that do animations and <laughs> A, a, a shape of their choice like oh, does right. it need to say send nudes does it need to have <laughs> hearts does it need to have some other cute little saying like I don't know if it does then like why is that supposed to be affordable that's right. ridiculous <laughs> yeah it, it doesn't yeah it'd be cool if it was but it's it's not right. gonna, no one's gonna mass produce something that says send nudes <laughs> yeah I mean <laughs> hey that's an opportunity for people that are trying to get in the games like Everything yeah. you make, just make sure it says send nudes. <laughs> It'll sell like crazy. I mean, that, that's a decent fad to get on right now. Yeah. But, um, okay, so let's do this. Let's start with from the time. So let's say guy hits you up. He already knows about this stuff. He knows that it's hard. It takes a long time. It's expensive and all that stuff. What does it look like from the time that they hit you up and say, this is what I want to do, money in hand. I know how much it costs. Let's go what happens from there until they get their lights can you walk me through it yeah i mean unfortunately right now we are i'm so busy get, we are garrett's right over here working with uh that it's taken us probably 10 to 12 weeks to get everything done just because it's only two of us uh thankfully we've got another guy lou who's handling all our emails he's doing great with that uh so we don't have to take time out of our day to do that and actually something that a lot of people don't really realize is that intex is still technically part-time for me um I I kind of stay home with with the with the kid. We got another one on the way, which is exciting. But uh, I'm only working about nine thirty to three, just because that's that's daycare. <laughs> so yep. uh, it's it's very limited. I can sneak out at night sometimes, but if if the kid needs something, I gotta go in. So uh, right now it's about ten to twelve weeks. But as far as the step, so let's say let's let's use the Miata ones for example. Um, I have these on the site, so I need to order this light the actual light assembly from uh, either eBay or you can get them from spec D. Uh, I got to order the kit from Illumisthetic. So both of those take about two to three weeks to get in. 
And another thing you got to order that nobody thinks about is this little guy right here. These lights don't come with it. And you got to buy these from eBay or you can try to find them local. The hell is that? What is it? So this is the little bulb holder, the OEM lights that holds the bulbs. I sell this as like a complete, you get, you plug them in and you're good to go. But uh, the aftermarket lights don't come with it. They expect you to swap it. Well, I don't have a Miata, so I got to go buy them. Uh, so once we get all the parts, it takes about two, three weeks, maybe sometimes a month, then it goes in line with uh, the orders that came in. So if you ordered on this date, we're not going to work on it until that day. There's still other orders ahead of you. And how many, how many times do you have people that hit you up that say, oh, you're busy for 12 weeks? Okay, I'll call you in 12 weeks. How often do you get that? Uh, that's, that's happened a couple of times. I think people understand now. Uh, that happened a lot at the beginning. <laughs> right. But I had to set it up to where, like, no, it just goes in order with who orders first. Uh, yeah. That's what website's for. And that's what, uh, that's what Lou is for. He'll explain that to you in email. And I have, like, an automatic response, too. So as soon as, you know, email, you get something back. It kind of explains it a little bit, too. That's good. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I remember early on in the days of trying to get people to understand that, like, if you wait to hit me up, until you're ready to, to, to buy, thinking that I'm just all of a sudden going to finish everything on my plate and have nothing to do, I think automatically you're already looking at this like this is like a fun, easy little side thing that anybody can do. Yeah. So, would you say – this is a question I want to ask a lot of different builders out there. Do you think that because custom lighting is much less understood and very few people actually know about it, that it's it's less valuable than something that's in higher demand like painting a car or doing a brake job or doing something that you could find in any one particular city there's always going to be a plumber there's always going to be an electrician but there's not always going to be a custom lighting guy so does that make it more valuable or less valuable because there's yeah. not as many people i have thought about that before like uh i like to compare it to like vinyl wrapping a lot of people have tried vinyl wrapping and failed at vinyl wrapping. I mean, I just failed last night super hard. At <laughs> uh, and so that it's a lot easier to justify paying the same amount for a paint job to wrap your car if you've tried it once. Uh, not a lot of people have tried custom building out an entire set of headlights. So I feel like, yeah, like people don't really understand the pricing. It, it, it almost feels like it should be something that you just plug in and now the lights look different. That's what it feels like. Because you can do that with, you know, HIDs or LED bulbs in your turn signal. But something like, like this is, is definitely not – it's not like that. It's, it's a lot more time. It's a little more skill to make it look right and last long, you know. So, yeah, I agree. I think it's – the perception of custom lighting is, is definitely off right now. I think it will get there, though. Yeah, I literally was like, I'm going to take on the the goal of, like, educating the whole world about custom lighting because <laughs> nobody knows. educated so many people. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the, the big effort that I have right now is how do I take my ability to, to make a lot of content and teach but then put the spotlight on a bunch of individual people and funnel people in their direction because yeah. I think at the end of the day – if I can act as some sort of like a qualifier so that the people that come to you through me have already been a little bit schooled on the subject and their, their preconceived notion about it being fast and easy and inexpensive is kind of out the door already. So that by the time they actually start hitting you up, they're like, I heard about you from fly ride or from the discord or from whatever. Right. And I hear you're the guy to go to. I understand it's going to take this long. Let's go. Like, yeah, I feel like for a lot of builders, they might be super, super handy. They might be very, very intelligent, know how to make LED panels and all that stuff, but they have no idea how to do marketing, how to do sales, or how to just talk like a human and connect with people that might right. want to buy. Right. That's a big problem. You're good at it, though. You're the man on TikTok. Oh, I appreciate I'm telling you, bro. Like, you got you to gotta oh, bring dude, all of that to the others. <laughs> Get everybody educated. I... I recently got my butt handed to me for the uh, infinity mirror lights. And I, I pretty much, I need a break. I, I want to write those off and I'm just going to send them to Steve at skeptic. I mean, Steve has it down. So right. yeah, 
that I've been doing on TikTok. I'm showing people that I'm doing it, that I've done it, and that it's really hard, and that I don't want to do it. <laughs> if you had 10 jobs that you did, out of all 10 of them, how many of them would you say that you knew exactly how long it was going to take and you charged properly for that oh, amount of time? <laughs> Zero jobs. I, I have, I'm not a <laughs> guy by any means i just happened to post on instagram and some people wanted stuff that i built i i just like i everything is in my head nothing's written down i kind of had to guess at pricing uh i mean sometimes the build takes a day sometimes it takes a month once i start it and in the, in the case of these infinity mirror lights i in my head it was like I'll, I'll give another month you know i gotta ask a guy to 3d print this and no one's ever 3d printed it or maybe it might take an extra month. Turns out that was a year. So, like, I don't, you just never know. You, you run into problems every, on every build, it seems like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I literally, I feel like the people that I've seen do really, really well, knowing exactly how long things are going to take, knowing exactly how much to charge so that they can do it as a system over and over again, in my opinion, there's like 10 of those people, like companies out there, there's not many of them and they do the same thing over and over oh, yeah. and over and over again. As a, as a creative dude, how do you feel about doing the same kind of job over and over and over again? Oh, I get bored. I know it pays, but I get so bored so fast. That's why I took on the infinity mirror. I mean, I got inspired by Steve with his, with his skyline and someone then hit me up and I was like, absolutely. I got to try it. I got to figure it out. And then a year later, I'm still working on it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I like try, getting the challenge and just trying to figure it out. I mean, we're working on a crazy set of 350Z lights right now that's uh, that got commissioned from us. And it's really cool, but stuff like that, you know, your normal, if I could do the spec D lights all day, I would get bored. I would probably make a lot more money. We could probably do like one set a day, but now we're doing these 350Z ones that, you know, they've got everything in the book and it's just so time consuming. We've been working on these for about two to three months, just trying to figure out how to make it all fit together. Yeah. So, yeah I would get bored. I think uh, Circuit Demon, I mean, they've got it figured out. I, yep. They've got, they got it. They got yeah. a big crew. Uh, yeah. How about this? Here's, a, here's another question because you brought up Circuit Demon and Jeff. Um, how many people have told you that you should expand your business and hire more people to work on lights? Every day. Yeah. <laughs> Talk, to be honest they're always like well if you're so far behind hire more people like if i could i would <laughs> yeah when we're we'll working on a project in my house what would you tell somebody that that thinks that you're that replaceable that you could just have another zach what what do you think about you yourself if somebody that had a company just like yours hit you up right now and offered you minimum wage to work on lights like how how good is that for you I mean, I wouldn't take it. I'd probably pay myself less than minimum wage, but like, I get it. Like, go work for me. You could probably make a little bit more, uh, but I don't know. It's so much more satisfying to have it be my own thing, to try and figure it out. I'm sure someone has the roadmap somewhere. Maybe not, I don't know. But it's, it's just so much more satisfying to figure it out. More of the figure it out the hard way kind of guy. I don't like studying. I'm just going to go out there and we're going to make all the mistakes and just see what okay, works. So that, that's the, here's the next question then. If you are not having to pay for your mistakes, if you make mistakes, but somebody else pays for it, do you actually learn or do you just keep making mistakes? Ooh, I don't know. Really good question. Cause I, I worked at a lighting shop for about a month down in Houston three, four years ago. And I made a few mistakes, but it just, I think I learned from them. Like I learned a lot there. I think you can still learn if you're, I mean, you're going to learn a lot faster if you're having to pay for it yourself though. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I'm thinking if, if people really want me to hire a bunch of people to build lights for them, then somehow I have to convince somebody to come work and learn and pay me for knowledge. And then after they have paid me to learn that stuff, then they're going to take on jobs to get paid minimum wage and if they mess anything up it has to come out of their pocket yeah i'm gonna guess that zero people out of a million would take that job right <laughs> because it doesn't make sense it doesn't yeah. Make sense. yeah definitely so i i think my my video response needs i need to put something together that's like a 
when people ask you why you haven't just hired somebody, let's look at a couple different ideas. Like why in the world would somebody that could do it for themselves go work for you? Yeah. And if they can come work for you, then what's to stop them from blowing up headlight after headlight every single time and then you having to go back and fix it? Because that's yeah. been my experience. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I mean, some people, they don't want to have to deal with the customers they want to have to deal with the social media like that, that is all so time consuming and and it can take a lot out of you especially if like you have that one customer that's it's beating you over the head with with every little problem or every little thing like it, it takes a lot out of you we've all had those kind of customers before uh so like some people they just want to go chill, like especially if it's a chill place to work they just want to go build some stuff and go home and not have to think about it whereas i'm sure you're the exact same way like after you're done working, you, you're never done working here. You're always thinking, <laughs> like, I'm always checking my emails. I'm always making sure that everyone's okay. Like, if there is a, if someone has an issue or if, like, a set of lights has an issue and they email me, I'm trying to be the first one. Like, I want to beat Lou to it. I want to be the guy that directly responds to them. And it, that can take a lot out of you, especially, like, I mean, I, you know, I got a wife and kids. And, like, well, sometimes we're at dinner and then someone's like, hey, I don't know how to install this. Can you show me how? And if, especially if it's a Genesis scoop, I'm like, yeah, hey, hop on. Uh, let me shoot you a video of the car. This is exactly how you wire it up. I run through here. I run through here. I run through here. Plug it in. And boom, you're done. But, like, right. I ended a dinner just to do that, you know? That's not normal. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, and what do you think about people asking you to do that without they don't really realize that that's what you're giving up it's it's costing you time it's costing you money so for you to sit and answer all of the dms that come in and answer all of the questions do you think that you would actually be able to get anything done if you literally just answered questions as they came in no no definitely not i sometimes I have to like shut down the email like i take it off of different sites and stuff just so that we have less, <laughs> like, especially on TikTok. We, we, I dropped the email off there just because we were getting so many. Just, there was no, we couldn't get anything done. That's why I had to hire somebody. There was literally two, three months ago, there was 1,000 emails. And if I sat down and did them every single day, it would just be Garrett working, which he, he does great. He's working as fast as he can, but there's still, we wouldn't be able to get anything done. So it's, it's hard to like show that to customers that like, hey, if I answered you as often as you're needing me to, I, which I, you know, as a customer, I could see that would be really frustrating to yeah. like a response as fast as, especially if they're spending all that, that money as fast as they want. But I just physically can't do it. Otherwise, your lights won't get done. So it's like, you got to choose either email or lights, you know? <laughs> so if you have a quarter million people on TikTok, do you even try to answer questions there or do you just make response videos on tiktok um a little bit of both if it's like something i haven't answered before or haven't answered a long time or like just a really cool question um then i'll make a response video but uh i spend like probably i make a video it takes me 10 20 minutes to make a video then uh i'll spend another five ten minutes answering comments or yeah about five ten minutes answering comments or if I see one that's really interesting, I'll go ahead and answer that. And then after that, I just let it, let it go. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, no, I'm, I'm asking you a bunch of stuff because I want, I want to find all the pain points of the different builders. Because I have what I assume to be the, the problems. Uh, and big shout out to Corso Motion. He actually he bought a badge right now on, on the live stream. <laughs> so I, I, I told people that badges give them superpowers. And I, I tried to say buy them, but I thought yeah. but them. So Corso Motion just butt a uh, a badge apparently. Yeah. I'm new to this, but we're we're learning together, man. <laughs> so um, I, I've got a question for you. What is a product that you have purchased recently? A tool, a product, anything that has helped you with your business? What's something that you bought? He's he's handing it to me right now. The I waited so long to buy an ultrasonic. Hey, ultrasonic cutter, like. That's it. We're ultrasonic cutter buddies. Yes. <laughs> That's dope. It is. Oh, man. It makes – it takes your build to the next level for sure. It's the way to go. I, I used to just use the Dremel. I kept t telling myself, like, I don't, need, I don't need the ultrasonic cutter until I tried it. Oh, night and day difference. Night. Oh, sorry. 
<laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> um, did, did you ever use one before you got the Wonder Cutter or no? No, I just sent it. I saw it on Amazon one day. Well, after I hired Garrett, uh, we were both trying to use the Dremel at the same time. And I was like, this is so unproductive. Like, either buy another Dremel or buy an ultrasonic cutter. And I was like, oh, this, is, this is the time. Let's just try it, see how it is. If we like it, then great. If not, you know, I got it. And I was like, oh, we're just not going to use the Dremel anymore. <laughs> so why, for the people that are watching that don't know what the hell we're talking about, what is an ultrasonic cutter? What does it do? It's, it's just a super, super thin cutter. Picture a Dremel cut, but half the size or less. It cleans up your cut a lot, cleans up the build. You're not going to have dust everywhere. Uh, I like it because you can then plastic weld, and you're not going to have this huge fat bead all down the, down the light, and you can guarantee that it's going to be a super thin cut, super sealed up. I just love that this thing is wireless, that you can charge it up. Dude, i got a weird question for you really quick. Can you right now get your power, the, the plug that goes into this, and show me? Because I have like eight power plugs, and I don't know which one it is. I don't want to blow this thing up. <laughs> I can buy one. I'll show you. There it is. <laughs> so. I'm guessing you lost yours, too. It's so specific. I bought it on Amazon, It's and it has like a bunch of different attachments. I, is I just this the original one? I don't have the original. I don't know where it's at. It never came with it or something, or what? No, we lost it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it made it to a couple of spirits. Yeah. But yeah, that's hilarious. Got to buy the one on Amazon. It's got like 20 different attachments. It's in there somewhere. Yeah. I don't know. Specific. <laughs> That's funny, man. Yeah, no, I, I've, I've got the old the old one. And actually, when I got the Wonder Cutter, I tested the blades because this is the old one. Yeah. And this one has to plug into the wall and everything else. And I put this thing through the ringer. Yeah. The little holder that holds the blade in there, that thing cracks and goes bad because it's vibrating so much oh, over time. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. gets so hot and all that. Um, but all the parts from Wonder Cutter worked on that thing too. So that, that for people that don't know about it, yeah, um, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's hardcore. What'd you say? I bought the blades from, oh, yeah. Like a pack of like 20 something of them for four bucks. Dude, honestly, if you buy the original stuff from Japan, it's so expensive. It's oh, like, really? I think, I think the machine itself was 400 bucks, but just the packs, just to buy the blades and the call it the little holder and all that stuff. It's like 75 bucks or something oh. wild. Yeah, no way. Just found so, them on .com and it was so much cheaper. Yeah, I do want to find the, the like heavy duty version of the ultrasonic cutter that oh. is available now. Because they there's the Honda cutter, but those things are gone. You can't, they stopped making them. Oh, so, that's what I was considering. I was either the Wonder Cutter or the Honda cutter. And this had one day shipping, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is, this is a, I think, a good answer for most of the people. So. Yeah. Um, so what's next with you, man? Like what you got your TikTok that's growing crazy. What what are you trying to do? What's like a goal that you have right now for the business? Well, I'd love to get more into YouTube. I mean, you're you're killing it over there. I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to catch up to you over there. Painted the wall so we can have a bit of a backdrop. And I don't know. In my mind, having a video on how to open almost every single manufacturer's lights seems like a great idea. So. We're going to try that, uh, opening up a set of BRZ lights for the how-to video for the first one. And we're giving it away on TikTok, so that's fun. Uh, shooting that right now and just trying to go hard on YouTube. It's, yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I don't know when we're going to do it. <laughs> when we're gonna well, let me, let me ask you a question that probably would hit with most builders out there because we all kind of suffer from this, like, imposter syndrome of who am I to charge people to do different – like yeah. for my knowledge. Now you're down to charge for your time to build, maybe not as much as you deserve, but you're down to get money for it. But about your time, would you be open to the idea of people being able to pay you to just spend 15 minutes with you and ask you a question? Oh, wow. I, I, you know, I never even considered it. Yeah. I, I think so. Uh, I can't decide if that feels wrong or not. <laughs> <laughs> Literally never I can tell you this, man. I, I, spent 15 minutes on the phone with the dude the other day and he was just trying to wire up some xk glow led strips right yeah. and the day before he was trying to do it and his car has a canvas system so it was like flickering and he was trying to tap it into the city light and he made a change himself later on that day but he had he scheduled a call it was 50 bucks 50 bucks for 15 minutes to have me on the phone now it's my full attention i'm yeah. 
video conferencing with him. He's showing me his car. He's asking me questions or whatever. The guy figures out his own thing and is thanking me for it because he tried to do something. But literally me just spending that time with him and telling him that what he did was the right move and giving him a couple extra ideas on what to do next, it literally just chopped any of the time that he would have spent doubting, knowing if that was the right thing, knowing if, if that was actually like what he should do or if there's a better way to go about it. And he ends the call thanking me for helping him out. And I'm thinking to myself, like, this dude totally just helped himself out, but he knows that what he did at this point yeah. was the right move. It was, it was the way to go. And I, I could just encourage you and anybody else, there's value in that. If really? I could go as like a, a course creator, like somebody that's doing YouTube, doing all these different things and get the very person that I know I want to learn from and I can spend time even for 15 minutes on the phone. I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars with courses and different stuff like that. And I've spent hundreds of dollars for phone calls with different people like that. But if I could just know that I got the stamp of approval from yeah. that person and get to spend that time with them for just a minute, yeah. then I can keep trucking and move on. And that's worth a lot of money. 50 bucks, that, that might seem like, who am I to charge 50 bucks? But dude, if I could spend 50 bucks for 15 minutes with Gary yeah. V or with, you know, Pat Flynn or any of my business heroes, oh my God, I'd, I'd feel guilty. I'd be like, how am I only spending 50 yeah. bucks to get to spend 15 minutes with this guy? So you're in the same boat, dude. People, people would feel lucky to get to pay you to have that connection, that time with them. And I think when you can prioritize what your videos need to be about and how you're going to serve with that, yeah. as well as how you can make it even more valuable for them to have that direct connection with you. Yeah. I think, I think you'll do kick ass dude, because you know, a lot of stuff. So you're talking about making videos that show people how to do everything on one type of car, right? Yeah. I can tell you that is worth a lot of money and you should do it for free. You should do it for money. You should just do it. But I can tell you, YouTube is going to be a lot more geared towards edge for uh, entertainment. Okay. And it's hard to, to teach somebody all of the bells and whistles, teach them all the stuff that they want to know, and then actually get views. You can't. Right. It's yeah. too much. Yeah, Most exactly. people, it's way more than they, they want to show up for. But right. if you show the fact that you're actually making that content and that that content exists and you're making that opportunity available for other people, yeah. and you tease, not just tease it, but you just show like beginning, middle, end, not all the meat. That's too much right. for a lot of people. I think you'll grow kick ass on YouTube and you have a lot of people on TikTok as well that I'm sure will trickle over the more and more you're, you're kind of building that thing up. Oh yeah. So. TikTok loves the educational content. They love the, the quick how to's. That's, that's the main thing I've learned over there is like, they don't want to, they don't want every single detail. So you're saying it's a lot like that on YouTube as well. That's good. Yeah. YouTube is very, very difficult to teach. If you don't teach with a lot of entertainment as well, you're going to have a hard time getting traction because it's, it's like, like, listen, right now I'm doing a lot of discord stuff. So everybody that's watching this on replay, make sure to join the community. It's, it's an awesome place. There's awesome people. Zach's in there. Other people are in there. But the point is when I'm learning about how to do discord, I have to watch these videos. that are like 20 minutes long. They're yeah. Boring as hell. It's so hard to watch. I fall asleep, but they're extremely valuable. Yeah, Yet I would way rather pay somebody to just set up my discord and be amazing. And all these video game kids teach it for free. But yeah. the fact that somebody I could just pay to come in there like like a, a freaking tornado and make it happen for me is massive. It's why we get custom lighting jobs. Yeah, because they can learn how to do it themselves. But to just pay you is one thing. But to teach them step by step how to do that all. There's very few people that are going to actually get a lot out of that. And you're actually doing them a favor by charging them money. Because if you yeah. hand it to them, Longer. they're just going to look at it like the, I look at those Discord videos. I'm like, dude, this is 21 minutes of this guy telling me everything I want to know. And I can't even keep my eyes open because it's <laughs> so boring. If I had paid 100 bucks for that course, then I'd feel like an idiot if I wasn't watching each little module, each little component of his how-to. So... I'm just telling you, I'm giving you the okay, the green light is yeah. okay to charge people to more effectively learn from you and accept money for that. You have the green light. You're good to go. All Never right. doubt yourself again.
Chris, it's official. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, I'm about to go hop over to Clubhouse and we do YouTube rooms. So we're we're working with Denji Travis and my buddy James Dunn. Oh wow, He's another big creator on YouTube. Yeah. And so right now I'm building this whole separate business, different than Flyride, that's all about making online content and online courses and how to write your your book and how to like do all of the the different digital things for businesses that have nothing to do with cars. And so there are certain people inside the lighting community in the car world that I know can benefit a lot from being in those rooms. And then there's guys who just don't care. That's not yep. for them. They don't want to learn about YouTube or how to do TikTok or anything like that. Um, but I know my, my man Corso Motion in the house, He's he knows when he sees this stuff working and growing on YouTube and TikTok and all that stuff for me and you, that yep. that's valuable information for him. So anybody that's watching this, if you're not on Clubhouse, find a way to get in there. If I know you and I can invite you in and give you one of my passes, I'll do that. Um, but yeah, for everybody else, I say do. just tune into Zach. Zach, is there anything that you're trying to do right now that I can kind of give somebody a call to action to say they should go check out what you're working on right now? No, I mean, we're just trying to catch up on these builds. That's, that's it. Is there any catching up? Is that a real thing? Oh, it's not. <laughs> I'm lying. That's okay. <laughs> that's you're, dope. you're right. <laughs> Right on. Well, I tell you what, we got to do more of this stuff for sure. And, yep. um, and the lives do it, man. And I think conversations like this are huge because a lot of people, Jeff at Circuit Demon just said, sup, lighting boys, or maybe that's Jeff's guy. Can we yep. get a confirmation? Is this a Jeff or is this uh, a Circuit Demon employee. employee, henchman, doer of cool things on the internet? I got to find out. <laughs> Because we gotta have we gotta have uh, a lot more of these conversations with different builders because I think people just don't know that the same stuff that we're all going through, everybody else is too. It's okay. the same deal. I, I see it all the time. I'd like to talk to people, other builders in the DMs, and and we all experience the exact same things. Just different cars. It's the same. You know thing. the difference between me and you and everybody else is that we're sticking our faces out there and we're real human beings. Yes, and you can connect with that. If you're just a brand and you don't ever show up, Jeff at Circuit Demon, same thing. He, you know, he's got the YouTube videos. He's on there. You see the personality. You see the humans. And I think that's what's missing with a lot of the people that just want to build lights and never talk about their kids or that they painted the garage wall or that they're, they're actually <laughs> relatable, you know? So. Yeah. I find all that fun. I like to see the behind the scenes of everyone's business. I like to see a, a little bit of their life. Not too much. I don't want to give away too much, but just a little bit here and there. That's dope, dude. Well, dude, thank you for joining me today. Um, yep. I'm going to do this again with you as well. We'll get a lot a lot more into um, your story and all that stuff on a podcast yep. episode. Awesome. I'll put that out there for everybody else, too. So, um, yeah, man, this was dope. It's fun. We're, we're fun. definitely going to have to do it again. And if they do they have this on TikTok? They do, right? Yeah, no. they do. All right. We'll have to do this over there. Never done it over there either. <laughs> okay. Well, it's on. And everybody who watched, thank you guys. I've been watching the chat the whole time. Thanks for buying badges. Thanks for uh, keeping up with Zach. If you're not following him on TikTok, make sure you are. Zach at NXT Glow. NTX Glow. I always say NXT. Yeah. NTX, North, like, North Texas. North Texas. <laughs> Just think North Texas. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks. All right, brother. Well, my room starts at 11 o'clock Pacific time um, okay. on Clubhouse. So. Anybody that wants to watch, hop over there. I'm going to catch up with my guys, and then we'll be live for two hours there. Um, and then eventually, at some point in the day, I'll actually be working on lights and making more content. So we'll see. Awesome. All right? Later. All right, brother. Have a good day. Have a good one.